Hey, hello everyone. We're from Cherry Chew Magazine, an independent online magazine for South Korean and Japanese entertainment and lifestyle. And this is episode one of the Cherry Chats podcast. Okay, welcome. My name is Chelsea and I'm the founder and editor-in-chief of Cherry Chew Magazine. I founded the magazine in August. 2021 and I'm really happy to be joined by my contributors today uh, Sakura, Abby and Hoon. Please can you introduce yourselves to our listeners? We'll start with Sakura. Yes, hi everyone. I am Sakura, the Japanese correspondent for Cherry Chi. Um, I'm Japanese and I've been working with Cherry Chi since 2021 from the beginning. Um, I am deeply passionate about sharing insights from Japan with a global audience. Um, I recently graduated from um, a Japanese university and I'll be moving to the UK pretty soon to do my master's. And also I've been working as a freelancer. I do teaching, um, translation and writing. Um, I hope you enjoy this video. Okay, Abby. Hi everyone, um, I'm Abby and I'm the South Korean correspondent for Cherry Chew magazine. Um, I've been working on the magazine since 2021 uh, whilst I was studying abroad in South Korea. Um, I've officially graduated my degree now um, and I'm preparing for a master's in uh, translation. Um, and I'm hoping I can offer a different perspective to the chat today since I've lived in South Korea for a year but I'm also a British citizen. So I can offer a fair bit of insight into culture in the UK too. So hope you enjoy. Okay, thank you, Avi. And Hoon. Hi, everyone. Um, my name is Sang Hoon, and you can call me Hoon. Um, I'm a new contributor in Cherry Chu magazine. I was very curious about uh, foreign cultures and K-pop cultures, um, which foreigners like these days. So I joined in this team. I'm not very fluent in English, but I hope you guys can understand what I said, please. Yeah, uh, thank you. Enjoy this video. Okay, great. Okay, great. So the Cherry Chats podcast is a space where we'll discuss hot topics that are of current interest, but also some topics that might not have a lot of coverage. Today in episode one, we'll be diving right into cultural differences and similarities between our home countries. Okay, so let's start off, first of all, explaining about how we became interested in one another's cultures. So we'll start with South Korea and Sakura. How yes. did you become interested in South Korea and when? Well, I wonder when I first got interested in South Korea. Japan, Japan and Korea are quite close geographically. Mm -hmm. So since I was a kid, I've been exposed to the Korean, Korean culture. Han Liu Wave. Yeah, yeah. Han Liu Wave, yeah. I didn't know this word. Um, <laughs> especially when I was into, um, I mean, like when I was uh, in a dance club and mm -hmm. uh, when I was doing some musical stuff, uh, even though I didn't know much about Korean culture, I used to listen to K-pop a lot because of the influence from people around me. Back then, I didn't know any Korean words at all. But during my first and second year of university, I went on trips uh, to Seoul and Busan with my friends. But I think my genuine interest in Korea um, started during the pandemic when I got into BTS. <laughs> yeah, at that time I was studying in France, but due to COVID, I was forced to return to Japan um, halfway through my studies. So like mentally, I wasn't in a good place, but BTS music and presence itself um, really saved me during the tough time. So, yeah. yeah. I can remember actually when you came to visit me in the UK. Yeah. So mm -hmm. me and Sakura have been friends for quite a while. And she came to visit me in 2019 or was it yeah. 2020? Yeah, 2020. 2020, literally just before the pandemic. Right. The UK. Yeah. Um, and I can remember at that time 
Sakura wasn't interested in K-pop. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't know much about it. Yeah, but it's so interesting. I feel like how the pandemic played such a big part in that. Because mm. I personally had been interested in K-pop since 2018. Um, and I, I now live and work in South Korea, but I hadn't like it hadn't been on my radar at that time to do so. But during the pandemic, I became even more interested and I would watch vlogs about Korea and all these amazing places in Korea. Um, and that's when I decided to apply for the job that I have now. So I feel like the pandemic really was a catalyst for that. Mm. But Abby, you mm. were doing your degree at that time, right? So how was yeah. that for you? It's funny you say that. I feel like it had the opposite effect for me because when I was doing my degree, it was all online. And my passion for Korean kind of took a bit of a dive because I was not motivated for online classes. So I feel like I lost a little bit of interest in K-pop and like K-dramas and stuff. Um, but that completely changed when I knew that I could visit South Korea in um, my study abroad. Suddenly I was interested again. <laughs> so um, yeah, but I started getting interested in K-pop. I think that was around 2016. Um, so a long time ago. Yeah. Um, but it kind of turned into a whole interest for South Korea because I remember when I was getting interested in it. Um, I used to watch YouTube documentaries about the Korean War because I was really interested in history at the time. Um, so I just watched these free documentaries on YouTube about the Korean War um, and also about um, like the Korea's relationship with Japan as well was quite interesting to me. Um, but it, I never considered it something that I'd do as a career or something I'd study in university in, until I started looking at universities. And I realised that English literature didn't interest me as much as Korean did. Um, sorry, Chelsea. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, <laughs> yeah, I, I decided, you know, I'll, I'll study Korean, see how that goes. And yeah, four years later, I graduated. Um yeah, and I'm I'm can't wait to go back to South Korea. I've been twice now. I just came back from a trip, um, for two weeks, and I'd experienced South Korean summer for the first time, which was different. <laughs> um, <laughs> but yeah, I can't wait to go back. Yeah, I think it's really interesting how how it's different the way that we became interested in South Korea. Like you mentioned the documentaries about like the Korean War and like the historical mm. side of it, because I feel like, especially during the pandemic, most people were influenced by the Hallyu wave and how that has like affected our perception of South Korea, I think is really interesting. Mm. Um, so it, you came at it from a more historical point of view, whereas myself and Sakura were more pop culture. So I feel like that would be a good segue to talk about the Hallyu wave and its impact on foreigners, but also people living in South Korea um, and Korean natives. So Hoon, how yeah. do you think the Hallyu wave has impacted people living in South Korea and South Korean natives? Uh, what have you noticed that's different these days? In the past, K-pop was a big deal. I mean, we love K-pop. We love K-pop, and everyone listened to K-pop. Uh, when I was when I was in middle school, like two thousand nine, eight. Yeah, at the time it was very popular in South Korea, but in these days, after BTS came, a uh, BTS appeared. Some Korean don't listen to K-pop at all. Um, and older people don't listen to K-pop at all. I mean, uh, still younger people like students or uh, 20s, yeah, they, they still um, like K-pop. But now there's a gap. Oh, um, yeah. The, yeah, yeah, the yeah. Only younger stuff. generation right. yeah, listen to uh -huh. K-pop. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so this is the mm, 
most distinguishable uh, point? The generation gap. Yes, yes, generation gap. Thank, Thank you. you. For example, mm. um, old generation, like my parents, mm. they, they don't know um, 17 or, you know, tomorrow by together. And mm. yeah. trade kids, they don't know at all. So this is very uh, impressive, isn't it? Yeah. Mm. Yeah, definitely. Um, I think on that point, so I work in an elementary school here in Korea, and it was really surprising to me that a lot of the kids that I work with don't know who Blackpink are. Mm. Really? Yeah, they don't know who wow. Blackpink are. They know uh, I've. Oh, yeah. And New Jeans. Mm. Like, New Jeans are so popular here. That was really you surprising know, right? to me. Because <laughs> I feel like back in the UK, new jeans weren't that popular. Mm. And then I came to Korea and they are everywhere. Everyone loves new jeans. So I feel like they deserve a special mention. <laughs> <laughs> new jeans is quite special. Um, some, some old people, some old Korean know them because new jeans song everywhere. So... Yeah, you're mm -hmm. right. Yeah. Yeah. What makes them special though? Do you have any idea? Uh in my opinion, um they look like um first generation girl group in South Korea. Like nineteen ninety mm -hmm. there are there were um Chakra and Baby Box. You might not know, but yeah, they are very um they look they look very uh how can I say like innocent? Do you know like very mm -hmm. gully, yeah. gully? Yeah, they are. New jeans, um, looks very cool and fresh. So that's why Korean people mm. prefer these days. Mm. That yeah. makes sense. Yeah, definitely. And I think another part of the Hallyu wave that we should mention is K dramas, mm. um, and people sort of obsession or fetishization right. of Korean people. One big thing that I noticed when I moved here was that a lot of the women specifically were very, very much here to find a Korean boyfriend. Um, oh. Yeah. <laughs> so I think that that sort of lends itself to the fact that K-dramas are so popular in the Western world. Um, so let's talk about that. Let's talk about how um, K-dramas and pop culture has sort of influenced people's idea of South Korea. Because um, I think that people sort of idealize South Korea. Yeah. And then when you come here, you realize that it isn't like that. So. <laughs> Does anyone have any thoughts about that that they'd like to share? I'll go. Go, okay. <laughs> Abby. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, since I started my degree, I think like at university, it was kind of a magnet for what we call career booze. Mm -hmm. um, basically, oh. people who wanted to either become Korean or wanted to marry a Korean person and then like live in Korea for the rest of their life because they had this idea of what Korea was. Um, and most of my course was actually girls. So I feel like it is definitely a female kind of centered, like it's it's targeted towards women. Um, maybe that they can live in South Korea and have this amazing like South Korean husband who would be really romantic and it would all just be like a K-drama. Um, but yeah, I, when I was in South Korea as well, I met a few girls who were there to to go to hunting bars and to like <laughs> meet hunting bars guys. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, it's like you can probably explain to him what, what a hunting bar is. Uh, yeah, so it's so called hocha, you know. So hunting ah, hocha, I see. yeah, mm -hmm. which means um, izakaya or pub or a bar, um which you can go with your friends uh, and you can meet girls or guys, you know, and they, they, every time they flirt on you 
like mm. r- randomly, just just randomly, and no no one um, stopped uh, doing that. So, yeah, I mean, <laughs> that's kind of weird, but yeah. Yeah, no one is there for a serious yeah. relationship, right? Uh, no, no. Yeah, it's like it's just for a casual. Yes, casual, yeah. casual meeting. Yeah. yeah, we call it hookup. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, hookup. Yes. Yeah, I don't actually know anyone who successfully found their their husband in Korea. So <laughs> yeah, maybe it's like it's just a bit unrealistic the the kind of image that K dramas present about South Korea. Yeah. Yeah, I think it can happen. You know, I have friends that are in happy relationships um, with Korean people, but I think it's. You know, we have to be realistic about it. And as difficult as it is to have a relationship in your home country, it's going to be that difficult here as well. People are people. At the end of the day, there's not much difference in that respect. Um, I think the dating culture here is very different to what it's like back home. Um, Like me and Hoon were talking about this the other day, actually. The fact that most Korean people, like Korean men our age, will already be in a relationship. Huh? <laughs> we we spoke about this. We said like, um, yeah, 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 yeah. The good ones yeah. are taken. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Basically. <laughs> good ones are taken. <laughs> oh, I think I I should correct my opinion. I mean, hunting pocha is not a weird thing because it's very. <laughs> It's very common thing, yeah. Ah. I've been there too, and my friends been there too. Young people usually go there when they are when they've turned twenty or twenty-one years old. Yeah. Can you sort of say anything about experiences with so-called career booths? Have you experienced it in the past? Yeah, uh, yeah, a lot, <laughs> many times. <laughs> I, I should not judge on them, but um, there were some uh, weird people at the university, and they act like um, Korean girl. Even they are not Korean girl. I mean, I mean that's that's good. That would be good, but they try to. Um, uh, speak Korean in weird way, not in a proper way. You know what I mean? Like agio things, you know? Mm. Yeah, like they try to be cute or something. And um, they flirt on Korean guys every time. I mean, that's good for me, but um, it could be, you know, it could be weird. And, you know, even even though it's just preference, but still, you know, they they distinguish people. Uh, so he's Korean. He's not Korean. So I prefer him like this, blah, blah, blah. That's kind of weird for me. So, yeah, this is my experience. Yeah, I think it's that the fact that they definitely target. Yes, yes. Korean people. Yeah. And there's yeah. no like, oh, you're from this country. That's not Korea. Like, I'm not interested. Blah, blah, blah. It's. That's such a yeah. strange way of thinking, I feel. Like, there's nothing wrong with having this idea of, oh, I'd, I'd like to live in Korea long term and have a Korean mm-hmm. husband or a Korean wife and, you know, have children and raise them to be, like, half Korean, half British, whatever. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. No. But I think there's a very fine line between the normality of that versus the obsession and fetishization of Korean people. Mm. When I first moved to Korea, I was very aware of the fact that I was a girl, a white girl in Korea that Mm. liked K-pop and watched K-dramas. And so for the first few months, I like refused to associate myself with K-pop. I didn't buy like any K-pop memorabilia, I barely even listened to K-pop. And, you know, BTS were dropping quite a few solo things 
around that time and I was I just didn't really listen to them which is insane because I'm a huge army like I love BTS but I just refused because I didn't want people to sort of judge me and mm. me in that light so yeah I think it's a really big factor yeah like, like interested in South Korea especially as a foreigner how that sort of affects you and the way that people view you as well Mm. um yeah Abby what are your thoughts on that like you you were here for a year so how did you see yeah. if that impacted on you or your friends perhaps um I admit I was exactly the same as you at the beginning I was like people would ask me oh how how did you get interested in Korea and I'd be like oh it wasn't k-pop like <laughs> people would assume that it was k-pop and I wanted to distance myself from that and be like, no, I'm serious about learning about South Korea and I'm, I'm interested in all of the culture, not just K-pop, not just K-dramas. Um, but I think after a while, you kind of realise that most people don't really care that much or they don't have that judgment. Um, like for me, what they just got to know me and then they realised, oh, it's, it's a, a career thing or, or it's a genuine interest um but yeah I think there is kind of a desire to distance yourself from that kind of group of people because you don't want to be judged in that way um but yeah I mean I don't think you can let it stop you from like you can't pretend that you you don't like what you like so um yeah I just stopped caring at the end (laughs) yeah definitely I think that's kind of happened with me now as well you'll see like I have a collection of magazines now with my cable titles on I'm like it's whatever I'm here to like to buy those sorts of things and yeah it just you can't let it affect that experience because Korea Mm. is so much more than k-pop Sakura I have a question for you about the whole Korea boo thing um obviously me and Abby come at it from um, a British point of view but what's your point of view of this term Korea boo as a Japanese woman? Actually can you please explain the word Korea boo? Oh yeah. Oh. (laughs) Oh, I'm not familiar with the word. Sorry you didn't explain. (laughs) Do you want to explain who? It's um, same as Japanese fetish. Yeah. In Korean version so Korean fetish. So uh-huh. people who likes Korea too much and mm. they they obsessed with Korean things, you know. Yeah. 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 Do, do you get I, it? Yeah. Yeah, I get it. Um t- yeah, I feel like mm, pretty much the same in Japan, even though we are close culturally, um Japanese people love to watch K drama in general. And yeah, we Japanese girls tend to fetishize Korean boys. And there are a lot of girls who want to go to Korea, live in Korea to find a Korean boyfriend, like a hero in K dramas. Actually, having a Korean boyfriend in Japan is like a, you know, good state status. Mm. Yeah, for. Japanese girls. I heard that it's the same in Korea. Having a Japanese girlfriend is like a plus point, extra point. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, there's always this fetishization thing all over the world. I feel like Japanese girls, Asian girls in general, maybe, are fetishized by Western guys. Um, Yeah, when I was studying in Canada, Lots of, I wouldn't say a lot of, but um, a few boys came and talked to me saying, oh, Sakura, you're Japanese, right? I like Japanese girls. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to get to know me? Wow, okay. <laughs> I was like, um, no, thank you. Because I understand that if you like the country, it's sort of natural to be interested in uh, having a partner in that country. But from from the point of view of people who are liked by those people, 
um it's me personally i it feels really bad to be expected to be like an anime character or whatever and mm-hmm. to be disappointed with what you think i am right um like it's just it doesn't make sense to me <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. Yeah, I found as well that it it kind of works both ways too. There's a lot of Korean girls that really want a British boyfriend and the idea that they have of British guys our age is completely different to what mm. maybe mine and Abby's perception of them would be to find really interesting. So I don't know, I feel like it's something that this this idea of someone foreign being more interesting than what you're used to you know the expression the grass is always greener on the other side it's like what you don't mm. have is always better than what you have and your perception of you know people from a different country might be skewed in a positive way but in a, a way that's too positive to the point that it becomes a negative and yeah, I think yeah. That's what we're kind of seeing a lot with career booze. I don't think it's uh, going to change anytime soon. But um, fortunately, you know, um, as you know, in Hongdae, there are many foreigners, people, uh, foreigners and Korean guys. And some Korean guys um, screwed up, you know what I mean? Like some Korean guys. Uh, screwed screwed up their image and mm. like Korean fantasy because they they try to flirt every time and they bothered um foreign girls. I mean some Korean guys, a few maybe. Yeah. So um as you said, Chelsea, uh, people are just people. So I think everywhere it's it's just same everywhere. Yeah. So I I hope people don't have um, fantasy before they go somewhere, you know, go to like the UK or Canada or, you know, Korea or Japan. Yeah, Yeah, I think, yeah, we need to let go of the whole fantasy element and sort of experience a country for what it is rather than for what we think it should be. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we all need to be aware of like, each person is really different. Yeah. Yeah. Massively. So we've talked about uh, the Howie Wave and career boost. Now we all know what the term means. Um, Let's pick one thing that we each like about South Korea, since we've all experienced being in South Korea. Um, Let's choose one like positive that we can share with one another. Um, I'm gonna start off with an easy one, I think. Convenience stores are absolutely everywhere mm. and they really are convenient. <laughs> like they do yeah. have to stay on the tin. Um, and that's something that we don't really have in the UK. Like we have oh. convenience stores, but I feel like they're much more expensive and there's a lot less of them. There's way more mm. convenience stores here than in the UK. Which is your favorite Korean convenience store? I like GS25. GS25, why? Yeah. <laughs> um, I don't know, there are many uh, events, uh, like one plus mm-hmm. one sales. Mm. You can find it every street. So it's easy to find. That's true. That's yeah. True. I have a preference for CU. CU is Why? Um, like you said, with the, the one plus one thing, mm-hmm. they always have one plus one on things that I like in CU. So that's great. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Avi, do you have a preference? Not really. It's funny how none of us said 7-Eleven. But I feel like most of them, they kind of feel the same to me. They sell the same kind of, like snacks like mm. whichever one you go into you know you're going to find what you need um mm. but yeah I recently on, on my trip this summer I did go into see you a lot I I don't know why maybe it was marketing <laughs> do you have a preference Sakura 
I don't have any preference actually. I think I only have been to see you mm. in Korea. Yeah. Okay. See you everywhere, no? See, yes. Yeah, uh, everywhere. Yeah. yeah. Oh. I wonder which convenience store like has the most branches. Mm. That would be an interesting thing to find out, or if it's relatively similar. I think it's just twenty five and see you are the most uh, popular. Yeah, because Seven yeah. Eleven is originally from Japan, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And yeah. Mini Stop, uh, you can't find find it easily. Mini Stop. No, Mini Stop is no. quite rare. I think. Mm, oh, it's rare. Mini Stop in Korea. I didn't know that. Mm. Is Mini Stop Japanese as well? I think so. Mm. Oh, is it? <laughs> I didn't know that. No, many stops. I don't know. I don't know. In Japan, um, oh. let me quickly check. Um, yeah, it's Japanese. Mm. Okay, well, I think that's a good segue into our Japanese segment. So, I feel like a lot of people who are interested in South Korea. Uh, also have an interest in Japan and vice versa. So from personal experience, um, I was interested in Japanese culture before I was interested in Korean culture. Um, this started around 2015 um, when I was in secondary school, which would be high school. Um, and my friends at the time were interested in anime. And one of my friends lent me a DVD of the anime, I think it's Eden of East. And I went home and I watched it and I absolutely loved it. Um, and from there, it, it, I just like fell into this rabbit hole of like anime and manga. I collected quite a lot of manga. Um, and from there, I started teaching myself Japanese. I bought the uh, Japanese from zero books um, and I worked from those um, which are great if you're like starting from the beginning and uh, not sponsored <laughs> um, <laughs> but yeah from there um, I like you know started reading more books about Japan and learning a lot about the culture and what there is to do in Japan if you visit um, and I did have a trip booked for 2020 but we all know how that year went and I still haven't been so I really want to go um but yeah that's my like little backstory of how I was interested in Japan um and eventually that turned into an interest in Korea through twice ironically because they debuted in both Korea and Japan um but for you Abby like how did your interest in Japan come about and when I feel like my my interest in Japan is a little harder to pinpoint it wasn't as like definite as South Korea like I I can tell the exact year that I got interested in South Korea but um a lot of my friends like you watched anime in high school um I remember the first anime I watched was Attack on Titan and then I started getting into Tokyo Ghoul and I actually have two copies of the Tokyo Ghoul manga in, in English because I can't speak Japanese. Um, I did try, but the three alphabets kind of put me off. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, but I think you're right about how if you're interested in one country, it kind of, you you want to see what it's like elsewhere. Um, so I also wanted to visit Japan, but when I was studying in South Korea, because of COVID, that I meant I couldn't go. Um, but I would definitely like to go in the future. Um, and I met a lot of uh, Japanese students on my year abroad as well. Um, and it was interesting to see the similarities and differences between uh, South Korea and Japan. Um, but I think it's the same with China, maybe, because after studying Korean, I've started being interested in learning Chinese as well um so yeah I think it, it is interesting how you just kind of hop <laughs> between the countries do you think a big part of that is the language and the appeal of like the levels of difficulty so I feel like with Korean it's maybe the easiest to read and write and then mm -hmm. maybe Japanese and you have like kanji and han hanja mm -hmm. in Korean and yeah. then obviously with like Chinese 
the writing systems a lot more difficult, but also the, the others sort of originate from Chinese. So do you think that yeah. language is like the main point or would you say it's more like the pop culture or just the culture in general? For me, it was definitely the language because I can't say I know a lot about Chinese culture. Um, but yeah, the, the reason I wanted to learn Chinese was to kind of see the, the similarities and where um, words in Korean came from um, to kind of expand my vocabulary. But I, I did find that actually my Korean knowledge helped with learning Chinese, not the other way around, which was quite interesting. Um, but yeah, it, it I don't know if maybe in the future I'll, I'll do a bit of Japanese, but not right now. <laughs> Okay, and Hoon, what about you? Where did your interest in Japan come about? Yeah, when I was five or six, um, I became interested in Japan because of anime, you know, anime. There were so many animes that we used to like, you know, Digimon, Pokemon, Dragon Ball, um, Death Note, Naruto, Bleach, One Piece. Oh my God, it's too, too, too many. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, um, as, as a Korean boy, it's very natural, natural to um, experience Japanese culture uh, because of anime or a movie or um, song like J-pop. So, yeah. Um, so at the time when I was six, uh, I always watch it. Um, Pokemon and Digimon in the morning, every morning. And I talked about it with my friends and we we played the card game, you know, like there was Pokemon card. So we, we played game. And then when I was mm, 14 or 15, something, uh, I watched a Japanese movie, like romantic movie. Yeah, a lot. Um, Japanese romantic movie is very uh different i mean it's very distinguishable i mean yeah because their their um story storyline the flow is very um uh cringy you know <laughs> like um their acting is cheesy or too romantic um which makes me goosebumps, but still I enjoyed it. Yeah. So yeah, after that I into I was into Japanese culture, I can say. Yeah. <laughs> That's it. Isn't Korean Shinchan super popular in South Korea? Oh, I didn't say that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Korean Shinchan. Yeah, <laughs> Shinosuke. Yeah, the popular. name is different though. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, I, I love the anime. Yeah. Oh Dangu? Yeah, Dangu. Yeah. Oh, is that originally Japanese? Yeah. Yes, yes. Oh, I have no idea. That's <laughs> new here. I thought it's a Korean anime when I was young, but it's not. Because the uh, character's yeah. name are yeah, 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 yeah. different. That's really interesting. So talking about that, like the Japanese pop culture um, and like a, a massive draw, I think, towards Japan is anime and manga yes yes what, you have some thoughts about that don't you <laughs> <laughs> i myself i'm not really familiar with japanese anime i don't really watch anime to be honest but as a japanese language tutor um more than half my students i actually would say 80 percent of my students uh, started to be interested in japanese culture because of anime Mm -hmm. So I am very proud of anime culture, but at the same time, I have mixed feelings about it because first, Japan is not only about anime and um, because I feel the bad effects of fetishism and the way women are portrayed when I'm actually abroad myself. Yeah, so I have this mixed feelings. Yeah, I think in lots of anime, women are very much sexualized. Um, yeah, <laughs> I think. That's true. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, that's like, 
one point where people would say like Japanese are weird in mm. a way because of the sexualization of women and the like uh-huh. anime culture has like quite negative connotations of like crusty old men sat in their bedrooms watching anime kind of thing <laughs> so yeah it's... yeah Japanese Japanese women are uh, often marked as easy or submissive mm. yeah um when I was in Canada I was told that um you're Japanese you don't know how to say no <laughs> um oh. He didn't say the exact same thing. I'm exaggerate. Uh, I exaggerated it, but he said something like that. And then it's not my first time being told something like that. Um, it always shocks me. We know how to say no, obviously. Uh- <laughs> I think even though it is a big draw and it can be a positive for many people, there are definitely downsides to it. And it's the same, I think, with K-pop and K-dramas the fact that there's the downsides to them as well as the positives. Um, I think they are, you know, they're great tools for learning about the the language and the culture. But I think people do need to remember that that's not the only thing that Korea and Japan have to offer. There's so much more. Um, Mm, Exactly. uh, What's one thing that you wish more people would sort of take note of about Japan? Good question. The politeness. Mm. I'm very proud of Japanese people being very polite to others. Um, we use polite language, which is keigo, a norifix. Um, a lot of my students actually asked me um, if they can only learn the casual language because in English there's no polite language and they want to be casual to get closer to people. But it's actually not the best idea because to get to know the person, you have to start off being polite. Mm-hmm. You can use the polite language while being very casual. So actually, if you want to get to know more about Japanese culture and make some Japanese friends, you have to first learn Keigo, honorifex. And then, yeah, I think that opens the uh, door to, you know, more detailed Japanese culture. And I really like the proper distance between people. Mm. Mm. It's not too close. Yeah, that's Mm. a really interesting point, I think, because... In the UK, like, we don't have that distinction between, like, politeness and, you know, casual language. I mean, there are certain things, but there's, it's a lot less, and it's not really a big part of our language. Um, So, yeah, it's definitely a really interesting point. Mm. Um, Kun, have you ever been to Japan? Uh, Yeah, yeah, just twice. Twice. Yeah. What were your like favorite things about Japan or when you visited, what did you enjoy the most? Um I would say their polite politeness. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They're very polite, as Sakura said. Um when I ask um where to go, I, how can I find uh, the way in Japan? And people answered very kindly and um and they cared about my um uh feeling you know i was impressed and i i appreciate it i appreciate it yeah also um uh, the streets are very clean in japan it was um impressive yeah uh you know in hongdae or itaewon or gangnam everywhere uh, back streets are very dirty in Korea, you know, but Japan, mm, they usually don't throw uh, trash away in streets. So. And Abby, have you got any plans to visit or have you visited in the past? I've not visited yet, but I, it's definitely a place that I want to go. Um, yeah, mainly Tokyo 
Osaka, uh, maybe some of the the islands as well, because Japan just looks like such a beautiful country. <laughs> Um, Sakura, um, what's like one part or oh, one place in mm -hmm. Japan that you think people should visit? If they've never like been to Japan before, where would you say to go? I I hate to say this, but <laughs> um, I would say Kyoto. Yes, Kyoto is so pretty. If you think of Japan, I think you'd probably think of this traditional, you know, buildings and um, yeah, Japanese trees and kimonos, things like that. Um, you can enjoy that in Kyoto. I said I hate to say that because it's not necessarily the real Japan. In Tokyo, the streets are not like this. People are not wearing kimonos. In Kyoto, you can enjoy the traditional side of Japan. Um, yeah, you can enjoy Japanese food, traditional food, which tastes really good. <laughs> <laughs>
Yeah, it's interesting that you mentioned the cost of living because when I was doing my master's degree um, in the UK, in Sheffield, we wrote a piece about the cost of living. That was our um, sort of project that we did, our campaign. Um, and just recently in past years, it's been really bad and it's so expensive and there's a lot of poverty in the UK. Um, and I feel like people abroad, like in Korea, because um, that's what I'm experiencing now, they don't realize that side of the UK and mm. the poverty within families and um, especially families like, you know, people with children, um, they struggle quite a lot. And at the minute we are having a lot of strikes. Mm -hmm. um, mm. A lot of our services are struggling. Um, so, yeah, but I think it's really important that you know, the study abroad pro programs really help to bring people into the country and sort of yeah. show off the nice sides of the UK. Because when I was living in the UK, you know, you sort of focus on the negatives. And I said mm. this before, like the grass is always greener. And then living in Korea, you start to notice the things that you don't necessarily like about Korea and the things that I like more about living in the UK. And so I think now, like, wanting to go back, mm -hmm. I see it in a completely different light now that I've been away. And I can see the appeal now of the UK and why people <laughs> to be there. You know, despite the, the cost of living, like you said, the, the green spaces and the, the history that the UK has, um, it has its uh, negatives. But we do have a very rich history, just like Japan and Korea. And our histories are so unique. You know, the history of Japan and Korea, though they are like intertwined, they're very different. And I think it's the same for the UK. Like the historical points are very yeah. special. Definitely, definitely. I want yeah. to learn British history because it's super interesting. And I hope... Uh, more Japanese people become interested in the UK but ironically you know how much UK's university charge us as an international student it's mm. double the price compared yeah. to local students it's ridiculously expensive I'm sorry to say that it's so expensive um I'm self-funding uh, my graduate studies and the uh, the high tuition fees for international students in the UK can be like really tough. Free, I recently received a scholarship offer from the university, uh, which significantly reduced my tuition fees. But without that, the considering the current yen depreciation, mm -hmm. um, life in the UK would have been really challenging to me. Um, even a bottle of water is expensive. For Japanese mm. people at this moment. Um, going back to South Korea, the the price of fruit and vegetables, like fresh produce, that's a big topic. And they are like they are expensive. Mm. <laughs> like yeah. there's certain things here that are definitely more expensive for sure. Yeah, um in Japan it's the same thing. Fruits are way more expensive than in Europe. Mm. and Abby um, when you were in Korea did that sort of um, change your perspective of the UK in any way and how mm -hmm. oh, completely when when I started uh, studying uh, Korea and, and Korean language one of the main reasons I wanted to study it was to get out of the UK to find a way out of the UK because I was I am really disillusioned with like UK government, UK education system, healthcare. I thought all of it needed to change and I was like, I just want to leave. Um, and then I came to Korea and started living in Korea for a year and I kind of had a new appreciation for the UK and UK culture and um, yeah, the history. 
like you said, I, I kind of appreciated what a rich history we have. And also literature, because literature was always a big passion of mine. Um, mm. I kind of appreciated like all, all the UK has to offer in terms of um, writers. I think it's really nice to hear like what you guys are interested about in the UK. But I think it's like a, a running joke in the UK, especially amongst young people, that the UK doesn't really feel like it has much of a culture, um, especially like with um, with food. Like I always joke to my my friends who are not from the UK, oh, like UK food is rubbish. Like it it doesn't taste of anything. We don't really have like traditional food. Um, so yeah, I think before I lived outside of the UK, I wouldn't understand why people wanted to come here. But after living abroad, I really started to appreciate my home country more. Mm. Yeah, I relate to that massively like I'm currently living in Korea and you mentioned the food all I want is like a full English breakfast or bangers and mash which is like sausage and mashed potatoes like it's all I want there's so much rice in <laughs> Korea like <laughs> yeah true I just I don't want to eat rice all the time I just want some potatoes mm. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so who you briefly mentioned about films that you like from the UK. Uh, you mentioned Harry Potter and also the TV show Skins. Um, yeah. So I wonder if we could just briefly talk about British pop culture, as we've mentioned, Japanese pop culture and South Korean pop culture. So why uh, or what specifically about British pop culture are you interested in? other than films perhaps oh um you know for example harry potter um is fantastic you know um there I were, agree. yeah there were no movies like that in the past and the novel um the writer is a genius i think she she made a fantastic word fantasy word God, I love the story. And <laughs> yeah, uh, this show, Skins, the drama, mm. um, is amazing for me. <laughs> um, it's very different from Korean teenager life and their culture. Uh, but Skins are spicy, uh, much, much spicier, yeah, more spicy. Um, I was, I got shocked because of their acts, how they swear, how they um, act, you know, they do drug, weed, and swear all the time. And they, they experience so many tra tra tragedy, 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 yeah. Like, tragedy, yeah. Yeah, tragedy, thank you. Um, yeah, so I, I, um, I could see their, a uh, poor life and uh, unlucky story, you know. And and then I realized that, that um, teenager in the UK uh, are different from Korean teenager. That makes me um, want to know about the the British culture more. Yeah. Abby, have you ever seen Skins? Because I've I've never seen it, so I can't really give my opinion on this have you seen it yeah I saw I saw some really early seasons um like in the 2000s um mm. and they were quite interesting I feel like it is a good depiction of some parts of uh, UK teen culture mm. it definitely doesn't try and dress anything up mm. like uh it it shows all of the kind of the bad things teenagers go through like eating disorders yeah. and like relationships drugs um even like parental relationships it was quite interesting um i think the later series kind of went a bit different from that and just kind of explored the same characters but in their adulthood mm -hmm. um which was quite interesting as well but skins is definitely a unique um uk tv show I, i'm not sure we've had anything quite like it since for you, Sakura, um, what aspects of like British pop culture are you interested in? 
Um, first of all, I love Harry Potter. <laughs> I love Harry Potter series, I do. <laughs> yeah, Harry Potter allowed me to learn a bit of British English mm. and it's absolutely fascinating. And well, I used to listen to a lot of Ed Sheeran songs. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, um he's not popular now yeah so we took a short <laughs> break and during our break we had a brief discussion about music um between our cultures um and Sakura mentioned Ed Sheeran um me and Abby said that at the moment like Ed Sheeran's not as popular as he used to be um mm. it's kind of a meme in the UK these days <laughs> And Abby, you also mentioned about um, One Direction and Harry Styles' popularity in Korea. If you could just touch on that briefly, I think that would be interesting. Yeah. Um, so when I was over studying Korea, I used to bring up One Direction because um, people would often ask me, like, what is British music like? And I would say, like, Coldplay and, like, the usual bands. Um, but I always said One Direction because I felt like it kind of, it was the most similar group we have to any kind of K-pop group. Mm. Um, but when I when I said One Direction or Harry Styles, people would, would not know who that was. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if it was like the kind of people I was talking to weren't into British music at all. But I always thought One Direction was big everywhere, like globally, um, kind of like the Beatles. Um, mm. But it was kind of a shock to me that I got to South Korea and people didn't know who One Direction was. Uh, the funny thing is Westlife, do you know? Westlife is very popular in Korea. Westlife? Really? Yeah. Westlife. Yeah. Yeah. We, we've learned English by their song mm. when we were younger. So everyone knows. Wow. Yeah. Uh, like singing their song. Reading their lyrics, so that's that's weird, right? <laughs> it's really cool, though. Actually, I feel like it just it? proves like how big of an impact music can have. Because mm -hmm. I know from personal experience, music was sort of the catalyst for me becoming interested in South Korea. Um, and the same for you, right, Sakura, with K-pop. Yep. yep. Absolutely. Um, so, yeah, I think that's it's really interesting how it sort of ties all of our cultures together. Um, mm. And, you know, we, we've touched on quite a lot in this episode. Um, and I think we have proven that our cultures are different. Um, lots of aspects are different. But at the end of the day, people are people. And yes. uh, a lot of things are very similar. Um, so with that, we will end our episode here. So thank you for joining me, Sakura, Abby and Hoon. This is really interesting. Um, and I hope we can make more episodes like this in the future. Let's do that. Yeah, let's do it. <laughs> okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for joining us for this Cherry Chats episode. We'll be bringing you more content like this soon, so please stick around and join the discussion in the comments below. For more content from us, follow us on social media, which will be linked in the description down below. And for our latest articles, head to cherrytoomagazine.com. We'll see you next time. <laughs>